All right, million dollar picks, which um, last week we did pretty well because we hit on the Chiefs. We won $661,000. We hit on our underdog, underdog parlay. We were only down 334000 for the season. And this is when we usually heat up mid to late December. This is what's happening. We've hit five underdog parlays during this season. Uh, and FanDuel has boosted a couple of them too. For the year, we're 5-19 and 19 on the underdog parlays in 15 weeks, which doesn't sound great, but it's actually really great because the odds for each one were at least like 6-1 to one or better. So we bet we've won about almost $1.2 million on those five underdog parlays, and we've lost 627000 on the 19 parlays we didn't get. Um, you know who always wins for us whenever we bet them? The Texans always take care of us. Yeah, the Texans. <laughs> but my question is, maybe million-dollar picks should have just been the underdog parlays. If we were betting like 200 k on each of those, we'd be, <laughs> we'd be golden. So we're going to do that in a second. But there's another parlay. FanDuel has these same-game parlays, too. You got excited when the New Orleans quarterback <laughs> got scratched and Ian Book now in control. And then we have two on the other end against the Saints front seven that we saw last week is pretty good. They can rush with four. Two is a gimmick QB, as I keep pointing out. Like he's deciding in the first second. Feels like a low scoring game. We can get a little ambitious on FanDuel with the same gamer. We can move Miami to plus three and a half. That's minus 190. We could take the under all the way up to 44 and a half. And if we do that, it is plus 103. So it's a straight bet. So basically, Miami would have to either win or lose by a field goal. And we can't have 45 points in that game. What are the odds Ian Book versus Tua will get to 45 points? I I don't see... This is... I sound... you know. I did a lot of draft coverage. I do. I don't see Ian Book putting up a ton of points against Brian Flores' defense. Let's leave it at that. And I, and I don't see Tua putting up a ton of points against Dennis Allen's defense. I see this game. I don't care if they're playing in paradise and the weather's great. I see this game being twelve to nine or thirteen to ten. And I wouldn't be shocked if Kamara's just taking snaps by the end of this thing. I, I, I don't. Wow. I'm, not, I'm not sure. I know a lot of people are going to tell me. Well, I watched him at Notre Dame and he did this, this, and this. I'm not sure Ian Book is ready for this one, but that, but that the Dolphins' defense is really good, and I think they're going to throw the kitchen sink at them. All right, so we're going to mark that one down. Niners Titans. One of the reasons we're taping early today. Yeah, I continue to love this Niners team. Let's go. I'm in. Let's do it. Ever since they boned us over, what was that? The Bengals that 34 to 26 game. But I was really kind of impressed by them, and then over and over again last week they came up. Uh, Big for me in a parlay that I had. Uh, not on here, but in real life. But uh, but I also watched a big... I, I watched pretty much all of that Titans-Steelers game. And I had the Titans. I had, in real life, I had a parlay of the Titans and the Bengals. They were winning till the fourth quarter and they collapsed. It's one of those games where all of a sudden they were losing. And I was like, I've been here the whole time. I don't understand how they're yeah. losing. I don't understand what happened. But uh, they just have an incredible amount of trouble moving the ball. And um, Informant was pretty good in that game. But in general, Tannehill, when you really go after him, when you really attack him, when he can't rely on the play action, you being afraid of Derrick Henry, teams have figured out now. They're just going at him. And his there's a lot of advanced stats and a lot of numbers on him that um, when you come after him, his numbers go way down. It's just the way it is. And I look at this Niners team that's really healthy right now, except for the D-back situation. but just had some banger guys and we saw some of them make the pro bowl, but Samuel Kittle, Bosa, like and the way Jimmy's playing now, I think they figured out how to run the ball, no matter who the running back is. And I like the minus three. I think I, I actually think this line should be three and a half. I know it's a Thursday night. Thursday nights get weird, but I like, can the Niners win by a field goal? I, I think, yes. What do you think? couple quick nuggets on this one. Kyle Shanahan did not leave the office. He pulled one of those. 72 hours, slept in the office this week. That's what I've been Ooh. told. Did the old sleep underneath the desk deal. Cramming. Wow. I always love those stories. That's an old school uh, football guy thing. Um, but also, AJ Brown and Julio might go tonight. I think they probably will, which is one of the reasons why I think that's only a three-point deal. But yep. in the in the end, I just, uh, you know, I just can see them just 
punishing Tannehill because they're they're down to their third left tackle. Their entire left side of their offense with Saffold and Taylor Lewan are out. And this is one of those deals where it's like Tannehill leads the league in interceptions and is this is the 30th ranked passing offense. And to beat the Niners, you got to throw the ball over the yard. I don't know if they necessarily can. Bill, I'm with you. And we might regret this in, in about 12 hours. But last week, we bet on the Thursday nighter. And I felt like I had the best weekend ever because we were the, the hay was in the barn. We were in. So I'm going to go with it. Let's go San Francisco tonight. So AJ Brown playing. Julio playing, but I'm not sure what that means because yeah. I, I, I think Julio is Julio's a name-only guy at this point. Foreman's been pretty good. I, I actually thought he was pretty impressive on Pittsburgh, but I don't think they can block. So if A.J. Brown's playing, awesome. But I don't think they're going to be able to block the Niners. And I think the Niners can control the game. My fear would be Jimmy hasn't had a bad Jimmy game in a while. You get the pick six early. Kevin Bayard to the house. And yeah. And, playing the, catch up. and the Thursday night games are weird. But I really genuinely believe in this Niners team. I think they're good. I think they're in the mix in a real way. And you think about like from a big picture standpoint, it's not like they can whiff on a game. No, they need this. No, they need it because they're eight and six. They're in the sixth spot. They have three seven and seven teams right underneath them. And then who do they have? Who are their last three? Let me look this up. Sorry. We have, uh, oh, Texans next week. Easy. But then at Rams week 17. So, you know, could nine and eight make the playoffs? Maybe. But who knows? They're, you know, you get this one. Now you got Texans in 10 days. Texans, you know, going probably for a number one pick at that point. Um, this is the one you need. I think this is a kitchen sink for them. I don't feel the same way about the Titans because the Titans, they still have the one game up on the Colts. It's a Thursday. I'm sure they want it, but I, I, I think it's more important than Niners. Yeah, and... You know, it's interesting. I reported this earlier in the season when I was on Fox and I, you know, people were, what? But they have Jimmy under contract next year. And like, if Jimmy keeps on playing well, like this might not be Trey Lance's team next season. Like they love Jimmy right now. So Jimmy's also fighting for something here and he doesn't want to necessarily be shipped off to some inadequate team. He he wants to be a 49ers quarterback where he took to the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. So there's a lot of people playing with a lot of pride right now for that 49ers organization. It's more than just wins and losses. It's individual stuff too. We're not going giant on the Niners like we did no. last week with Chiefs Chargers, which um, turned out to be the right call. <laughs> it was Brand unbelievable. Brandon Staley helped us out a little bit. Uh, we bet on Mahomes. We bet on the Kelsey Hill combo. All three of them came through. Okay, other uh, other ones we're looking at. So I hesitate to do teases, which is why we won't go huge on this one. But at the same time, I really like this tease. And I think somebody would have to get there would have to be a major COVID thing. So maybe we do a caveat that if there's like what we have the Cowboys, the Packers and the Bills in this. If we lose, I don't know, Rogers, Dak or Josh Allen, we're, this, okay. is, this is a void. We're void. We, because we're doing this on Thursday. I think we have the ability to avoid this. This is a good list. Let's let's give five guys out of all those. Okay, we'll do this put, with all the bets. Like it's like there's this is Parsons, we're avoiding this. Yeah, like Parsons is out. Do we are we out? No, I I'm fine with Parsons. We we can win without him. So Fanduel has eight and a half point teases that are minus one ten. We're gonna take the Cowboys from ten and a half to two to beat Washington. And Washington, man, I you know I heard. I, I was on the plane yesterday watching these ESPN shows. They're talking about Jalen Hurts and Jalen Hurts look good. It's like Washington was missing everybody. What are, Everyone. We're, we're praising Jalen Hurts. I still haven't seen him look competent against a good defense that actually knows how to play him. Um, I would be very, I think that was a fool's gold game with Jay, Jalen Hurts. The reckoning is coming for him in one of these games with the right kind of defense who doesn't let him scramble and makes him stay in the pocket and throw. We've seen it and it's really dicey with him. Yeah, look, the Eagles put up 236 rushing yards and it's they're 175 yards on the ground. So like you could compliment Jalen Hurts' operation in, in running that offense and getting, you know, first downs with his feet, but like you can't watch that game against the mass unit of Washington and be like, oh, Jalen Hurts was amazing throwing the ball on. He had on two turnovers. The they they lost Washington lost four starters during the game. Yeah, and Washington is nobody. Up, Ashton was up in this game early. They had to fight and crawl to get back there and they used the run game. Anyway, that's so we're going to bring the Cowboys down to two. Packers minus seven and a half against the Browns. Doesn't seem like Miles Garrett's going to play. And even if he plays, he's got the groin injury. Now, 
I've been around a while, Shrakes. The groin injury is not one of those, I'm going to play through it. Like, Never good. It, it, there's no way to shoot it up. What are you going to, like, shoot his cock? Like, there's there's nothing there's nothing you can do with a groin injury. It's just like, Hello, I, nurse. Am, I am compromised. So, um, for how important he is, for how disastrous their quarterback situation is, they do not, they cannot score more than 17, 18 points in a game, really, ever, it doesn't seem like. And it seems like the wind has been taken out of those sails. The Raiders game felt like a death blow to them the other night. Feverish comeback. Um, there's their guy, JC Treader now has COVID or he's on the list. I don't know what to say anymore. Like he's, uh, he has COVID or he's on the list, whatever it is. He's on the, he's on the list with the COVID and he's a pretty talented offensive lineman. And maybe Baker plays. We're doing this on Thursday. Maybe he doesn't, but I'm with you. I think that Rogers on Christmas day, I think he's coming in and he's coming in hot. Yeah, and the Browns in Green Bay on Christmas, that's depressing. It feels like they, I, I just don't think they'll be able to fight their way through that one. Then the third one, Kyle, turn the camera off. Hmm. We're going against the Pats on a, on a million dollar <laughs> wow. pick. Wow. This is reverse psychology? <laughs> what is this? Bills plus two. We're going to bring the Bills up to 10 and a half. I don't think the Pats are going to like beat the shit out of the Bills. Like, I'm sorry. And even if they get a big lead early, the Bills, that's kind of when the Bills are at their best, when they're down 20. That's finally when they play the way they're going to play. I just think that's a hard team to blow out. The Bills are going to be fired up. Biggest game of the year for them. The Pats, you know, I think scoring points for them, thinking about can they put up 30? Against the Bills, 35, like probably doubtful in shitty weather in Foxborough. It feels like a 24 to 20, 23 to 16, 23 to 21. I think it'll be tight. I'm nervous about it. I think the Pats will win, but it feels like a one-score game to me. I feel the same way I did about the Colts game last week, which, by the way, was a one-score game until Dante Hightower just completely overruns the one open lane and Taylor goes for 70. Uh, I like the thought of taking the Bills to 10 and a half where basically even if they're down 17 with two minutes left, they can still get the cheap touchdown and take it to 10, whatever. What do you think of that? Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's a close game. I also, I wrote for FoxSports.com. I think JC Jackson versus Stephon Diggs is the matchup to watch. Like mm. if they can, if because Cole Beasley is not going to play and Allen has been so zeroed in on Gabriel Davis and Stephon Diggs. But if you can eliminate Diggs, it really puts a stress on that same situation they had in the Monday night game where it's like, all right, now we got to run the football. And if Singletary can't do it, then like, all right, we're in the same spot we were in regardless of how many pass attempts Mac has. Bill, I ask you, do you feel, even after a loss, but the way they came back there with Mac finally having to like lead them on drives and actually being able to do it in the second half, do you feel better about the Patriots in January after the way that game finished up? Or do you feel very skeptical that they could actually do this against some of the top quarterbacks in the league? No, that, that game actually weirdly made me feel better. Yeah, I think a lot of Patriots fans feel that way. Like the defense showed they up. Were they were so bad. To... They, they, you couldn't have played worse in the first half. And they didn't get blown out. And they hung around. And they fought back. And I really thought they were going to win in the fourth quarter. I was like, holy shit. They figured it out. And I think they learned a valuable lesson. Like, you got to trust Mac. You just have to. They, the Colts were very specific about what they did. They flooded the box. They were not going to let us run. They were going to kind of force Belichick to go, all right, I'm going to have to trust my rookie QB. And he didn't do it until the second half. But as soon as he spread everybody out, the Pats were moving. I mean, they got inside the 10-yard line at least five times in that game. They did. A couple, I mean, a couple, one, like I, to see Bolden getting big carries in like a big December game in 2021, like, uh, you know, that, that On one a is, sweep. I know. And then secondly, him not wearing the right number. Like, I feel like he changed his number and I still don't know who that is. I'm like, oh, it's Bolden, but he's supposed to be in a 38 number. Like, it's, yeah. just, it's all very confusing to me still. But I, I just don't know if the offense is going to have enough to keep up with the Chiefs well, yeah. or the Chargers. Like, I have I have genuine concerns after that game. And they did come back, but I don't know if they had I the will horses. say they really missed Harris in that game. And I think... Harris does some stuff with them because he can catch the ball out of the backfield. He's a threat, right? When Ramondre's in there, they're just playing, the other team's just playing run. When Harris is out there, the field opens up in a in a different way, I feel like, for them. So, and I, I'm not positive he's going to play this week. Kyle, Kyle, are you there? Kyle? 
Kyle. I don't want to talk about this. I don't like what you're doing. What? It's okay to... Kyle, we're still rooting for the Pats on Sunday. We're watching it together. I don't know. No, it's fine. I'm not going to be rooting for the Bills to cover. I'm just... Sometimes a million dollar picks, you got to go where the value is. And I think it's very unrealistic to think the Patriots are going to win this game by 11 points or more. That that will be the final score. Even if they're up 14 to 17, I... I've watched Buffalo do this over and over again. They're really good in scramble garbage time. Like it's probably one of the best three teams. So anyway, all right, we're going to mark down those three. I'm sorry, Kyle. I'll make it up to you. I'll have really good beer on hand for Sunday. <laughs> do, Kyle, do we invite KOC on Sunday? I feel like we do. We had good luck with him. Yeah, just to balance what you're doing with this beer. <laughs> all right, fair. To balance it out. All right, fair. Bill, for the record, you have never, in the in the year and a half we've done Million Dollar, you have never bet against the Patriots, even with the points or whatever. You have never done this. I, I'll do it when the value is there. And in this case, I think it would be foolish to think that this is going to be a Pat's blowout. That's crazy. I'm going to be completely psyched if they win this game. I'll take a one-point win. Uh, all right, three straight-up games. And I think we don't have to spend a ton of time on this, but Bengals minus three Ravens. I like the Bengals. We've we've ridden the Bengals over and over again. We watched the Bengals kill the Ravens a few weeks ago, and they just cover zero blitz the living shit out of them. And it seems like that's the Ravens kryptonite. I guess my question is, would I be more nervous in this game as with the Bengals minus three if Lamar was playing on an injured angle or if it was a healthy Huntley? Because I'm kind of hoping it's injured Lamar playing, and I think it's going to be. Yeah, he didn't practice on Wednesday. Uh, I... I don't know if they're better off with if if, if Lamar's out there. He's like, coach, I'm ready to go. Like, I don't know what they do. We agreed. I mean, you were saying first round pick. I it's not a first, probably a second or third, whatever it is right now. His value, but that's fine. That guy looked good, and he went yeah, blow, but blow with Rogers. To be fair, I was talking first round pick for Brett Huntley, not Tyler Huntley, because I think <laughs> I, I think I called him Brett at least once. But I'm old, and people know. Um, it's all right. But yeah, Huntley. It's interesting in my fantasy league. I'm going Someone against. Pick him up? No, I'm going against uh, the great Tony Barbieri and his team, the STDs, in the West Coast semifinals. His quarterbacks were Lamar and Tua. He had zero fab dollars left, but you can do zero dollar pickups. You just lower in the pecking door. I had three dollars left. Did you block Tannehill, them all? Tannehill, Tannehill free agent, Huntley free agent. Picked them both up. So defensive. Yeah. Tua. Such Tua's a dick in thing his starting lineup now. Guess what? I'm going to wave Tannehill right before the game today, so he won't be able to get him at all. Um, but yeah, it, and I don't know, like, if Lamar plays, that is that good for me in fantasy? It might be. Like, like is he going to be able to run around on a bad ankle? Probably not. Is he going to throw a couple picks? Maybe. And the Bengals have already proven they know how to play that team. And I'll tell you, I work on Fox Sunday pregame, and um, at, you know, my job at 11 a.m. Eastern is to tell you who's playing or not. I've actually been able to break the news on Lamar the two times he had when he was sick, and then the bone bruise last week. Or I'm like, he's not going. Um, the Ravens do a really good job of keeping it in house until about 11 a.m. Eastern. So the line, if it's going to fluctuate, like you're not going to know if Lamar's going to play or not, you know, until Sunday at that point, and the opposing defense won't. But I think, I, I think you prepare for him the same way. Huntley was really good last Sunday and he might be able to throw the ball into spaces that Lamar isn't as accurate with his arm. Uh, one good thing about this, Bengals are minus 104, so it's a little less than the minus 110 big we're, we're usually used to dealing with. The Ravens are good at two things. Hoarding information like that until the tail end right before the game and then dispersing social media videos that helped their cause after their coaches fucked up two weeks in a row with advanced analytics. <laughs> what did they, they like, do? They oh, you pretty- didn't see this? Like the next day they were like, hey, we got to put out the Harbaugh asking his players if he should go for it. And he's like asking Huntley and Mark Andrews, should we go for it? What do you think? Should-? And they're like, yeah, let's go for it. Let's go for the win. What are the guys going to say? No, let's be cowards. Let's let's take a toe tee. Coach, Bring out we're Tucker. not, not going to get it. Yeah, coach. And and they send this out and we're supposed to watch. I'm amazed how people react to this stuff. People watch it like, that's so great. He asked his players. It, it's like, if I ask my son, hey, do you want to go out for ice cream? Guess what? He's going to be like, yeah, let's go out for ice cream. If you ask NFL players, should we go for it? Not one person is going to say, nah, wouldn't be prudent. Let's be cowards. Let's take it to overtime. Who's saying that? Nobody. And I was on uh, Good Morning Football. We had Torrey Smith, the old Ravens wide receiver, and he was on and he's saying with all the Ravens fans watching and he's just like, you got to love that coach trusts his players. I'm like, no, you don't. 
No, you don't. Yeah, you just don't. I, how about this? You're the coach. Make the fucking decision yourself. What are you doing? No, you don't. Uh, well, listen, uh, listen that, that's the kind of guy he is. He's, he's, he's got that balls to the wall mentality and he's going to lean on his players. It's like, okay, great. It didn't work two weeks in a row. What are we talking about? Uh, I think Kornacki said, uh, and I love citing Kornacki, but he does now the playoff odds. And it was like when they did not get that two point conversion, their odds of making the playoffs went from like 88% to 50%. So it's like, I love that he loves his players, but I don't know. Maybe. And here's the other part of that play. And I can go into it many times because uh, my wife's from Baltimore. Her parents, they are season ticket hold. Like, you know, I hear it all day long, Ravens fans. And it's like, the the one deal is that what everyone doesn't realize is that there's 42 seconds left. So say you do get the two-point conversion and you're up 31 to 30. Rodgers can still complete two passes and beat you with a field goal anyway. So it's not like this was a walk-off situation. Right. But to me, it was like, all right, your defense is playing well. Take it to overtime, and then let's see what happens in overtime. And if Rodgers beats you in the final 40 seconds, he was going to do that anyway. Fine. I I did not like the call. I could respect the call. I could understand where the players would like it. But gosh, for everyone to be saying it was the right call, I come on. It was the right call that was so obvious that the safety and the other team made a sprint over. Yeah. sprint toward Andrews as the ball is being snapped. Because he's, it's so clearly going to Andrews on a rollout to his right. But it was the right call. Great job. Uh, next one we're going to do. Raiders at home against the Broncos. Raiders are minus one. Ra the Raiders are the Michael Myers of the NFL season. It's like, wait, I thought we blew them up. I thought we cut their heads off. I thought we locked them in a basement and set it on fire. Wait, why are they still here? I thought we shot them in both eyeballs. Um, listen. This just comes down to Drew Locke. I I think he's terrible at football. And we have, I really do. I, I think he's terrible. And uh, we have a rare chance to bet against him with decent odds. I also think Cam Newton's terrible, as we've discussed many times. But the odds on him have swung so far that there's no value in betting. It's like minus 10 and a half, Tampa over the Panthers. But in this case, the Raiders just have to win by two points. I don't think Drew Locke is a starting NFL quarterback. So that's that's my case. And, I, and, you know, fourth quarter, I don't know if you watched that game. We obviously, I was. He's horrible. Of, of course I watched it. Fangio's clock management with the two minutes. Like, Ian Eagle is yeah. really good at his job. Ian Eagle was being, like, really polite. And he's like, interesting clock management here. And I'm like, someone, what is he doing? Before the two-minute warning, like, not calling the timeout, just eating 40 seconds. Like, there are so many. Vic the Fangio, Fangio, Fangio uh, plus lock equals we're winning this Raiders bet. I think so. And I, you know, we had a keep to leave on uh, Good Morning Football and in commercial. We were raving about how good Cooper Cup is and all this shit. And he's like, you know who's really nasty? I'm like, who? He's like, Renfro. Hunter Renfro is. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> and Akeem is like, Hunter Renfro is nasty. And I'm like, he is. And he, he and Carr have something. And I, I know Sertan is a superstar and all that. And Justin Simmons is great in the back end. But I could see them just focusing on and finding a way to win this game. It's a bummer he's not on the Patriots. He could have been the logical successor to Troy Brown, Edelman, Amendola. He just would have yeah. been like the perfect Welker. Uh, last one. You can't, so you can't comment on this because you're on the sidelines for this game. Doing the sidelines for Colts, Cardinals, NFL Network. I fly out Friday morning. I'll be in Arizona and uh, I just got off the phone with Cliff Kingsbury and Kyler Murray and Vance Joseph. Yeah. And so you're recusing yourself from this, but, uh, and you said, let's not do this one, but I'm doing it. I'm not listening to you. <laughs> the, the Colts are plus one and a half against the Cardinals. And, uh, and I just like the Colts and they're way too obvious. And maybe by the time we actually do these picks, maybe I'll back off. Maybe the fact that you're doing this game is a red flag that we should stay away. I don't think Kyler Murray is the same guy. And I was looking at his stats from last year and this year and like the running stats are way different. Um, he He's peaked in October for two years in a row. I don't think he's 100% healthy physically. I don't think teams are afraid of him taking off as much because he's just not doing it as much. And the no Hopkins thing is a huge deal. And it's like, oh, cool. He might come back for the NFC title game. Well, guess what? You're not going to be in the NFC title game. <laughs> Sorry, Arizona. Um, I just think the Colts are going to be able to run on him. I know you can't comment. I Trace, can. I can, give you, I can give you a ton of commentary because I just spent two hours talking on Zooms with the Cardinals guys. And I'll tell you that they all agreed that like last week sucked and it got out of hand early and the turnover with the Amani Orarie, I don't know how Gus Johnson said it, but I loved it. Uh, the interception he had, it was like, all right, 17 to three. Now it's 24 to three. Like, what are we doing? But 
they have like a real I mean, I'll say it like it is. I feel like it's a, a kind of fuck, fuck them all attitude. Like we don't care. Like we're we're good. We know we're good. We're ten and four, and they're coming into our building, even if they don't win at home, and even if they're coming off two straight losses. Even I, I don't know if they're like at all as you know panic buttoned as the rest of us are. So maybe we know more than they do, but they certainly don't seem at all intimidated by the Indianapolis Colts. They respect the Colts' run game, um, but I think they think they're going to win this one. I might stay away from this because. It seems too easy, and Carson Wentz is involved. Yeah. Is there an Easter egg I should do on the sidelines? Like, I'm going to be on air. Should I do like a let's go? Should I do something for like a million dollar? Oh, let's go. <laughs> like on the air? Just like a wink, like a Carol Burnett, like tug my ear? What should I, I do? Think you, I think you throw in a let's go. <laughs> uh, Jeff Hornacek, wipe my brow. I mean, just I can do yeah. anything. You tell me. Well, no, the, the listeners will know. So we have we have the Miami New Orleans parlay, which, which mentioned earlier. And then... uh Let's take a break. We'll figure out underdog parlay of the week and then we'll do million dollar picks. Okay, underdog parlay of the week. Here are the candidates. Big pressure now. We cost FanDuel $1.7 million last week. People are into these. People are betting them. FanDuel's like, what the fuck? Why are they winning? <laughs> is FanDuel into these? I mean, FanDuel's like, wait, these, this isn't as fun as we thought it was going to be? Um, we like the Lions plus 220 against the Falcons. We did. Possibly no Jared Goff. I, Not I sure we like it as much. So who's it going to be? David Blau? Yeah, our guy. And our Tim Boyle. Tim Boyle. Pretty rough. Okay. Well, so we have that. Not as excited. But then again. I'd stay away. I, I, golf was good last week. I'm going to stay away. Let's give golf a little bit of credit here. How many times do you have a chance to go against the Falcons when they're six-point favorites? I know. Then? When everyone's picking them, too. I know. This is exactly and the people game. people putting them in teases. All right. Uh, we have the Vikings who are plus 148 against the Rams. Now, the Vikings, that's the spot we love them in, right? When they're, <laughs> yeah. The, give them a when, great... The, now, of course, is the week they win, you know? Right. But we like... You never want to bet... You know, never want to lay points with them. Nope. You want them in a situation where they're... Nobody believes in them or whatever. But I... You know, the Aaron Donald and everybody going against... Kirk Cousins obviously makes me really uncomfortable. <laughs> yes. So there's that. We have Steelers Chiefs. Steelers are plus 300 against the Chiefs who probably won't have Kelsey and Hill, but then what's your information on the Chiefs? Well, they just need, they, they get Chris Jones back and they just need to get two negative tests in a row. So we're doing this on Thursday. I know talking to guys in that organization, all these players feel fine. There's no symptoms. They all want to go. So I, I don't know. I don't know how to do the COVID, but like if Kelsey or Hill is out there, I'm not betting against these guys. So there's that. Then we have one of my favorites, Texans Chargers. Oh, baby. Texans plus 350. You have a Chargers team. Eckler looks like he's not playing. Derwin James looks like he's out. In general, the Chargers love to zag anytime anyone trusts them, right? Perfect. Texans a little frisky. Like, point point blank, there's some friskiness with them. Davis Mills looked pretty competent. Now, they don't have cooks. No, and who's God their knows, entire offense. Yeah, who's their entire <laughs> offense. But, man, if they had cooks, I, I would be trying to talk you into the Texans plus 350. But, they but don't. with no cooks, I don't know how they move <laughs> the ball. So, what do we do? I, I, I don't really like any of these. Okay, what about... <laughs> it's with everyone's with COVID. We don't know who's playing and who's not. So like, are Dolphins still underdogs or are they now favorites because they're, because we got no. the book. Well, maybe, maybe that's what we do for underdog parlay of the week. I think we could, we could do our Miami, New Orleans, Miami plus three and a half under 44.5. That could be our underdog parlay of the week, but it's only minus one Oh three. What about Jets Jaguars? Who's favored in that game? Let's now the that the team. line is like right the line is like pretty even. It's Jets plus one. So I guess technically the Jets, uh, see, they're not even technically an underdog. They're minus one. Yeah. So that it, doesn't really work. You were talking Jets with the uh, with Sean and JJ. It's like I talked to Salah this morning and he's he's on the COVID list. He feels okay, obviously, whatever. But he's like, dude, I got seven kids um, in the house. I've got to be isolated. Like this whole thing sucks. And like he's just trying to get that negative test. Like all the things that you don't think about 
when these coaches have it because they've got families and they've got to do yep. this whole game. And it's like, it's a major, I know in a lot of coaches, you know, Sean Payton's gone and they win and it doesn't matter if, as far as the wins losses. It's just what a stress this is for some of these, these organizations when you get these COVID tests. Well, the Steelers are plus 310 now. Do we trust the Lions? It, it when in doubt, go against the Falcons? Should we just do it and say, Tim Boyle, if you're in there, go have a day? So we have, that would be, Lions are plus 220. Lions Steelers, that's plus 121, or 12-12. So bet like basically 100 to win $1,212. I'm not saying we don't do that, but you, what, you want to put in the Vikings too or somebody crazy? Who? Let's just say Vikings and Jets. Let's go four teams and put real oh money. Oh my God. And let's just say, you know what, FanDuel, we're going out for it all this week and we're going to go four crazy ones and let's Well, see. I thought the Jets, didn't the Jets, they've had, they have like 17 COVID scratches. Yeah, yeah of course. That's it. Yeah, exactly so we're right. not putting them in. Oh, okay. But, and they're, that we can't do that anyway because they're not an underdog. Well, I guess we could put the Vikings too. Yeah. All right. So that would be, oh my God. What do we got? Like a thousand to, to one? What is the Steelers, Lions, Vikings is plus thirty one fifty three. So if we bet thirty three K on that, it would win us one thousand <laughs> oh my God. Jesus. Yeah, thirty three K would win us uh a million dollars, basically. And I'm not going to kick myself if the first two hit and we don't get the third. Like, we're going in this thing with no real passionate pick on any of these. Let's just do it. Okay. All right. That's what we'll do. And for FanDuel, maybe we'll boost. So we'll boost like Lions Steelers. Sure. Okay. Or we'll ask them to do it. Who knows with COVID. All right. Million dollar picks. Week 16. Last week, we won $661,000. We are $334,000 down. Right there, though. Right there. Uh, for the 2021 season. But this is when we heat up. First one, Niners, minus three, Thursday night. We're sneaking this in over the Tennessee Titans, who has A.J. Brown back. We get it. I think we both believe in this Niners team. Feels like a field goal game. I think they win it. I believe in the Titans being down to their third left tackle and being without Lawan and Saffold. And this is the Nick Bosa, Eric Armstead, let's wreck shop game. That's what I'm betting on here. Armstead, Kittle, Bosa, Samuel. Is this the most testosterone team in the league right now? Yeah, and you haven't mentioned Trent Williams, who is like the biggest, Trent alpha, Williams? biggest alpha in the league. Yes, I'm in. And don't forget about James G. <laughs> he's an alpha in his own way. He's not Jimmy anymore. It's James G. <laughs> James he's, G. He's wizened. He's had some injuries. He's had some setbacks. He's come to the precipice. Now he's James G. Niners, minus three. 300K? Yeah, yeah. I think that's right. Yeah. All right, that's there great. we go. 300K on that. Next one, eight and a half point tees, which gets minus 110 odds. We're putting three teams on this. The Cowboys from 10 and a half to two points against Washington. Just win by three. We're good. Packers minus seven and a half, taking them down to plus one against the Browns. Not really worried about that one. Miles Garrett hurt. Browns look like a mess. Stefanski's got to be. Is he, you think he's at the point where he's looking at other quarterbacks on YouTube yet or no? <laughs> he had a lot of time. He's been on, he was on the COVID list for about 40 days. Right. He's been a lot of time to browse. <laughs> a lot of Russell Wilson clips right now. Uh, so we got them and then we got the Bills. That's right. I'm going against the Pats at million dollar picks, but the yeah. Pats can still win. I can have the best of both worlds, but I think this is a close game. We're taking the Bills to plus 10 and a half. Okay. And we're putting 300K on this and we have here are our voids. This bet is voided if the following people don't play. Dak Prescott, Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen. It's fair. If between Thursday and Sunday morning, those you guys know are ruled out. I'm going to remove Dak Prescott. Wow. It, you it, think Cooper yeah. Rush can win this? Cooper yeah, Rush? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen. Either of them get COVID, we're out. This bet's voided. Otherwise, we're putting 300K on at eight and a half point tees. Rodgers can't even be ruled out for COVID. He's he, You can't even test that man. So right. we're good. Can't. We're fine. We, you'd never know. Next one. Bengals minus three against the Ravens, a team that they crushed earlier in the season. We don't know who the Ravens quarterback is. Frankly, we don't really care. The odds are minus 104 on this, and we're going to put 300K on this as well. Did you like Joe Burrow's nightlife comment? Uh, that was hilarious. We don't get COVID in Cincinnati. Nobody That's goes it. anywhere. There's nothing to kind do. of a dig, but it was like a, like a I don't know, half-assed compliment. Yeah, I don't even also, know how you would describe it. 
It would be a dig if he held out and didn't want to play there or something. He likes it, so that's good. We're in. He likes it. How did you feel about Chase making the Pro Bowl, by the way? I was surprised by that. I know. He's had some he's, really... He's really disappeared in some <laughs> games. Up and down games, but he made the Pro Bowl. Man. There's a lot of Pro Bowl questions. We could do we could do a whole show, Bill, just a whole 30 minutes on Pro Bowl snubs if you want. We can do I really... Time. I disagreed with the Chase one. Anyway, uh, Raiders Broncos is our next one. We're taking that one as well. Raiders minus one. This is a... We're betting against Drew Locke game. There's no other way to say it. Drew Locke and Vic Fangio. Both, don't, and don't, Vic Fangio. Yeah, late game The Locke-Fangio uh, combo put 300k on that and then last but not least 300k on a little special FanDuel alternate line parlay that we've had some fun with maybe this will be what they promote it's called the Ian Book book it bet let's go Miami plus three and a half so we moved that line tweaked Mm it under 44 and a half those two things have to happen minus 103 and that's what we're going to ask FanDuel to mess with with the boost for this week because we, we're we going to do something so goofy with the underdog parlay that they're not even going to want to boost it. Yeah. Uh, we are going to put 300K on this. And I'm going to give us a little boost. I'm going to, I have boost power with my bet. I'm going to boost that from minus 103 to plus 115 just for us. You know what? If- How about plus 120? I'm feeling generous with ourselves. Plus 120 on that. Miami plus three and a half, under 44 and a half for the Ian Book Tua, Tua. extravaganza. What do you think? Bill, if if we get if we win this, which I think it's a lock we will, I am not a Drew a lock, I will be sending you an Ian Book Saints jersey immediately after for Christmas. <laughs> and you will be rocking that next time we do million dollar picks. Book it. Uh, <laughs> all right. So we'll see. Maybe FanDuel, that will be the one they boost if they don't like the underdog parlay. And then just for the hell of it, just because we're feeling frisky. What do you think? 33K or just 10K on this? 33K? 10K. 10K? 10K, yeah. Let's be, All right. let's be wise. We don't love any of these picks. We're just kind of... Yeah, we don't love... Hey, we love the Lions until Goff went down. My man, Jared Goff. One thing I love, Jared Goff in a big spot. He's yeah. Available, yeah. So we're going to do 10K. Um, Lions to win... Steelers to win. <laughs> this is absurd. <laughs> Lions to win over the Falcons. Steelers to win over KC. Vikings to beat the Rams. 10K at plus 3153 odds. So we'll we'll win $315,000. Oh my gosh. When that Greg Joseph field goal goes right through the uprights and we win this one, I'm going to, I mean, that's you know what's happening. Let's go. Yeah. All right. So that'll be our little mini flyer of an underdog parlay. I still like the Steelers. The, can we do Steelers Vikings too for the hell of it for 33k? Sure. Sure. All right. So then we'll do Steelers Vikings 33k at uh plus 916. We're adding that one in. I have the I I I can't shake it. I have a weird feeling about the Steelers in this Chiefs game. Do you? Okay. I really do. I know it's absurd. But I think this Steelers team, I think they're going to make the playoffs and we're all going to look at each other and go, "How the fuck did that just happen?" They have this vibe to them that they're almost... I watched that whole Tennessee game and just could not understand how they were winning it, even as they were winning it. Yes. Is that a good thing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good for underdog parlay. All right. So those are the million-dollar picks for week 16. 